I'm excited to introduce you to an incredible person that I said many of you already know, Dr. Deb Sandella. And Dr. Deb, as you remember, is the founder of the RIM Institute and the best-selling author of Goodbye, Hurt, and Pain, Seven Simple Steps to Health, Love, and Success. She's also an award-winning psychotherapist and the originator of the groundbreaking Regenerating Images and Memory Method, which we call the RIM Method, which is proven neuroscience tool that helps people process emotional wounds and dissolve subconscious blocks. Many of you have probably worked with Dr. Deb and had that experience. I know I have, and it's been very profound for me. And, and Dr. Deb is one of the most powerful and effective emotional healers that I know. So Dr. Deb, welcome. Thank you, Jack. It's great to be here. Well, it's great to have you here. Um, you know, what we've come here to talk about today is trauma and how to recognize the signals when it's there and how to respond effectively to trauma. 90% of maybe 95% of what's stopping us in life is trauma. And sometimes it's really intense trauma, like sexual abuse and physical abuse. Sometimes it's just little things that happen where we may have made a decision about ourselves from that traumatic moment that's blocking us. I know, Dr. Deb, you've called trauma a hidden saboteur that prevents people from achieving success. Can you start by explaining what you mean by that? Sure. Uh, thanks for asking, Jack. Yes, because uh, trauma, as you've mentioned, is having an experience of a very stressful event. And the range of what that kind of event can be, as you identify, can be very innocuous to extremely uh, unforgettable. And so what happens though with trauma, it's like having a moment in our lives go on pause, like in the video, the inner mind video, there's this one moment that freezes. And once it's frozen, it's what's the most, um, it's the moment that is most terrifying, not consciously, but emotionally in the body and it gets frozen. So then we keep living our lives. We forget all about it, but it's still there. And so that's what we'll be talking a lot more about today is how that works and how we can work with it really. So, so how does trauma lead to self-destructive thoughts and behaviors? I mean, we've all experienced it. You have this traumatic moment in time and then it moves into these beliefs. Sometimes they go underground. We don't even know we have them anymore. Behaviors that are unconscious. What's the, what's the dynamic of that? Well, one of the things that um, <clears throat> happens that's really powerful when there's a traumatic moment is a very uh, sudden feeling of helplessness that we cannot, uh, that we're somehow in danger, whether that's emotional or physical, and that we don't have the power to be able to protect ourselves or those we love. I mean, it's the same in that situation. So in that moment, helplessness, the framework of helplessness freezes on uh, the screen of the unconscious mind. So it's like having you know, a screensaver on your computer. It's there all the time in the background. So when we look at the world, we are looking through that helpless, terrifying feeling uh in the way however that image is presenting and then other people look in at us and they're looking at that screensaver unconsciously they sense it they won't, may not see it directly because it's not known but it's the background all of a sudden it becomes the background of everything we're doing so we're not um not feeling so comfortable taking risks stepping out of our comfort zone so that really has a big impact on how quickly and whether we grow, whether we become more successful. As you know, you have always made the point about risk-taking, how important that is to grow, um, that expanding our comfort zone, stepping out of our comfort zone is just so important. Yeah, I think about some of my own traumas that I've overcome over the years and you know, through your work and, and my own work. And I, I, I the, the term you just said that feels really powerful to kind of just slam me in the face was helplessness. Mm -hmm. That when I think about the times I had traumatic experiences, especially as a young child, you know, like being not measuring up to some expectation my dad had and then him getting really angry. And then I felt like, oh, 
like, I don't know how to survive this. Like uh, that didn't work. That's what I, my natural response was. I don't know what else to do. And then I was like, it's, oh, wow, you know, this is like scary. It feels right. very dangerous. That, that's exactly right. It's all of a sudden that scariness now starts to become a limitation to, you know, how we see ourselves and what's possible for ourselves. So it's very significant, very significant. 